This is his business, Doug Polk's business, is attack people bigger than him so that he brings people to his site. So then he changes that into money where he puts them on, you know, get, sells uh, his, his, his product. Winamex présente Club Poker Radio. Thank you for being uh, here with us. So let's talk first about the, the most recent uh, subject. Obviously, uh, you know what we're talking about, the player of the year. Um, so it was a really tough battle during the last week in Rosvalov. And you learned when you landed in the US that you were the player of the year. But then a few days later, you received a phone call uh, saying that it was actually Robert Campbell who won. So I guess it was a real roller coaster of emotions. Uh, there was a lot of reaction on social media. How did you handle everything? So I'll be honest with you. When I got the news, um, I wasn't. I thought I was going to be very upset or angry, but I wasn't because I thought about what I did. I went to Rosvedov with my intention to leave with the most points and win Player of the Year, and I did. I accomplished my goal, and this is all a personal journey. It's all about silly goals. There's no money on the line. It didn't cost me anything other than a picture in the Rio. So in the end, I was happy for Robert Campbell. I felt like he was deserving. I was proud of the accomplishments that I put together. Obviously. Had I known the points were different, I would have played different in a lot of the tournaments, especially the last one. Um, and then, of course, some of the reaction. I mean, you know, you had Doug Polk and Sean D both, like, accuse me of knowing the points were wrong, which isn't surprising to me because this is the, what they do. They just baselessly accuse people of something with no evidence, just, eh, I think so. Very, very bad thing to say in poker to somebody that you're a cheater without any evidence. And I have lots of evidence to show that I didn't know, and all they have is, well, He pays attention to this stuff, duh. So he must have known, duh. I'm an idiot, <laughs> duh. I'm a troll, duh. Like, that's all they got. Like, it's so stupid. It's very typical, you know? Truth is irrelevant. Vraiment, ce n'est pas important pour, pour, pour elle. It doesn't matter to them. They don't give a shit about the truth. Yeah, that was, that was actually my next, my next question. Uh, were you surprised and hurt by the comments and like the strong accusations they made against you, Sean Deep and Doug Polk? But uh, apparently you were I'm not, not surprised. Really surprised. Well, yeah. how would I be surprised? This is his business, Doug Polk's business, is attack people bigger than him so that he brings people to his site. So then he changes that into money where he puts them on, you know, get, sells uh, his, his, his product. That's what he's been doing for since he started. It's not new. He's been attacking me with lies for five, six years. It's, it's, it's just an extension of that. So, of course, I'm never surprised when he has something bad to say about me. Of course. Mm -hmm. And uh, did you have the occasion to talk with Sean Deep during uh, the d last WSOP in, in Rosvadov or not? I was civil with him because I realized, like, his brain doesn't work like a normal person. He has, like, <laughs> true. Oh it doesn't. God. He has, like, a lack of empathy or understanding. Because he said on January 3rd, I was got engaged January 1st to my wife, Amanda. On January 3rd, he tweeted, I can't wait. I can't wait for the divorce tweet. Who says that? Not a normal person. So I said, what's wrong with you? His friend said, Sean, why would you say something like that? So from that point on, he's never apologized, never acknowledged that what he said is wrong, doesn't seem to care. So I realized he's just a little cuckoo. So I see him that way and I don't take him all that seriously anymore because his brain doesn't work right. Just mm. something's wrong. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I understand. Yeah, it was a mean comment. Je sais pas si vous no, to... wait, wait, wait. Uh, it's, it's normal to be angry, you know, it's because uh, when you're attacking every day uh, for, you, you say, six years, how do you handle uh, being attacked very often? It's not th that time. You know, uh, because you're you're a public person, so mm -hmm. or do you handle it? Yeah, well, for the most part, like 99% of it, just ignore it, don't bother. But when somebody makes a serious accusation, like says you're a cheater and you lied or you didn't know the points, then it's important to speak out and show all the evidence, which shows that absolutely not, you're dead wrong, and you know that's that's not okay to do. If you come after me with stuff, I don't care. Come after my wife for nothing. She doesn't even know who Sean Deeb is. She first said, who is this fucking guy? I don't even know who he is. And, uh, you know, so for him to say that, uh, I have to respond and, and you know, show respect for my wife. But mostly I think the approach is just ignore it and realize that a lot of times people don't like you because they want to be you. They want to have what you have. They, they, and, you know, jealousy, hatred. It's easy to have mob mentality. When you're in the top of your industry, whatever it is, a lot of people, instead of trying to climb themselves, They want to pull you down 
and step on your shoulders. And that's never a good strategy long term as, as a life strategy. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, to come back about the, to the WSOP and the player of the year system, uh, do you think, because you already complained many years ago about the system, uh, and do you think that this incident this year uh, will push more the organization to change the system to be more about quality instead of quantity of, and mean cash? I hope so. That's what I've been pushing for for years. And the main idea I have to fix it is to limit the number of caches that count. You can come up with whatever number you want, whether it's 10, 12, or 15. I don't care. Pick a number so that, you know, Chris Ferguson and the other players who just last-minute reg try to double up and get 50, 60 points for player of the year. It makes for stupid poker. Like in Rosvedov, I was vlogging, and I was showing people, like, this is what I'm doing. I'm going all in to try to double up to get a min cash. It's like not poker, you know? We want to celebrate wins, final tables, not... Ooh, I came 785 in the Colossus. Who cares? That's not a big deal. Shouldn't get any points for that. Mm. And uh, yeah, you had an amazing year. Uh, you got married. You quit Poker Stars after 12 years of sponsorship. Uh, your vlog is really booming. Um, how this year was uh, like uh, life changing for you? Well, you mentioned the missed biggest and most important one, which was you know marrying my wife Amanda Leatherman. Great story about that that many people don't know is. About 10 years ago, I bought a ring for her to, to ask her to marry me, but I never gave it to her. She was young, wanted to party, have fun. I was in a different place. You know, I was older, you know, much ready to, you know, get settled down. She's like, I want to have fun and live. So we split, you know, I kept the ring for 10 years in my safe. I never got rid of it. And she came back to Vegas to do a show and we started talking again. And, I, you know, we had the chemistry. She's grown as a person. I've grown as a person to where now it makes sense and it works. So we're like, well, hey. I have this ring, so I might as well give it to you. So she accepted and, uh, you know, it's been blissful. Like we, mm -hmm. she's the perfect wife for me in every way. She fully understands poker, how to be supportive, how she, you know, she knows like when I get knocked out of a tournament, my brain is not available for discussion. I can't talk about uh, the drapes or the, the color of the bathroom or shoes. <laughs> no, I'm still thinking like, well, the guy check raised the turn, the bottom pair, maybe I could have called, shoved, whoa, and then he did like my head, my, I'm not, you know what I mean? Like, I can be sitting next to you, but I'm not really there, right? Mm -hmm. But she understands that and she doesn't take it personal. She knows I need my, my time and space to just, you know, think. That's what makes you good at poker, though, is like after you play, you should be thinking about all the hands and going, okay, what did I do right? What did I do wrong? What can I do better next time? Yeah, it's, it's really crazy that you kept that ring for so long. Ah, I know. Yeah. Yeah, my <laughs> ex-girlfriend probably didn't like it very much. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not. <laughs> we, we won't tell anybody, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, about about poker stars, it was also a big uh, change for you because you stayed with them for 12 years. Uh, and so what was the main motivation for you to uh, to just uh, take your freedom? Well, you know, 12 years is a long time, as you said, you know, you don't. Is my audio OK? Sorry, I heard yeah. myself. Yeah, 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 okay. Okay. Uh, yeah. So 12 years is a long time, as you mentioned. And I feel like at some point. Sometimes like being in the same thing, you can get what's called stagnated or, you know, it's kind of going through the motions. And uh, for them, they're like definitely going in a different direction. You know, you saw Liv and Igor recently, you know, split with mm. the company and they're they're just they're changing the model for how they're doing things. And I'm also going in a different direction myself. Um, so it just made sense at this time to sort of like, okay, you have a different direction for the way you want to go with the company. I have a different direction for where I want to take my life. But I have nothing bad to say about the many years, there's obviously one moment, and the only moment that I fully regret um, within the company was the SNE debacle, where they screwed over the players and didn't honor an agreement that they that, that they had. Um, that was a tough time for me because I didn't agree with the decision. Uh, I don't run the company, so I vo was vocal. I never defended it because I think it was outrageous and terrible. And I don't think, from a PR perspective, they will ever recover from that because people are always going to have a negative view of poker stars from that time and i don't think they're ever going to fix that necessarily um but other than that like changes they make and trying to keep up with you know with the, the the changing nature of poker and how tough it's become and they're trying to stay in business and doing what other companies are doing i don't have a problem with that stuff the s e thing was one where i look back with regret that i couldn't do more uh yeah as you said uh Poker stars will never fully recover from what they did, and they received a lot of criticism. Um, um, 
but you also did uh, when you were still uh, have the sponsorship with them uh, that people were saying you were not completely honest and you could not totally speak uh, freely uh, so do you think that now that you're not with them anymore things are changing for you the way the people look at so, you now so that's absolutely not true like what people are it's absolutely not true i was 100 transparent and honest i was telling people privately what my plans were Everything I did, I was on the phone with David Bazov four hours a day trying to convince him to honor this deal. Several times I got him on the end of the call and he's like, okay, you're right, we're going to do it. Yes. And then the next morning he talked to other people. He says, ah, we can't do it. Fuck. You know, so everything that I, you know, I went through during that period was um, like trying to get them to honor this agreement. There's nothing that I said while I was with Poker Stars that was a lie. I would take a hundred lie detector tests to prove that. You know, my, my views on what makes sense for an ecosystem, and I've talked about this many times, right? There's three parts to an ecosystem. The losing players, the winning players, and then the house, right? There's three things that make, make a poker game, right? One of them you need. The other two you don't. The only one you need are the losing players. Take out the winning players, you know, you have the house, and they keep, keep, keep playing. Take out the house, run the game yourself, you're good. If you don't have losing players, winning players won't play. So there's no games, so it's finished. Fini, c'est fini, right? <laughs> c'est plus, plus important to focus on, you know, making sure that the people that deposit and don't withdraw, that they're having fun, that they have a chance to win. And if that means that it cuts into the pro's profit so that the company can stay alive, so be it. That's just the way it has to be. And I know pros, they think of themselves like, oh, for me, I'm going to lose, you know, revenue. Okay, well, this, losing some or getting none is a big difference, right? It's yeah. so, I mean, and the bottom line, it's a business, right? Whatever ch price they charge, if you go buy a shirt or you go buy a sandwich and you don't like the price, don't buy it. Don't buy it. Nobody forces you to buy it. You don't like, don't buy. If you don't like their pricing, so fine. Fini. Bye-bye. Yeah. Au revoir. <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah, about like the vlogging. So it's, it's really like uh, getting crazy. You were doing it all the time in Rosvaloff. Uh, so how, like, uh, what the impact you have with that today? Like how many people look at your vlog? What's the next, the next goals you have with that project? What do you well, want to do well, next? Yeah. What was really fun with the vlog? I do it in the world series in Las Vegas and also, you know, did it in Rosvedov and I get like pretty close to like a hundred thousand views every day of people watching. The reason I did the vlog partly, especially in Europe was because I sold packages to people. So they could like have a piece of me and they could root. And many people were following the World Series of Poker, not on Poker News or looking on the Internet. They were just watching my vlog. Yeah. So they didn't know the results. So it's kind of like a reality TV show. Right. I thought it was a good way to, you know, sort of bring in new people in a different way and have them see like the ups and downs. Like I edit the thing. Like I, can, I send the video. Sometimes I act like an asshole, like really not nice. Right. I'm pissed off. I'm angry, whatever. I could delete that, but I don't. Because I want people to see the truth, le vraiment, right? <laughs> of like, you know, it's not always, hey, uh, you know, I'm sometimes I get annoyed. Sometimes when I just get bust in a tournament and five people grab me and say, hey, can I get a picture? Sometimes I go, what are you, oh, leave me alone, you know? I'm normal, <laughs> I'm a human being, you know? And I think people start to see that more. And I, I think it's best to keep it that way where it's, you know, not, where it's authentic. Mm -hmm. Are you editing yourself, your, your vlog? No. So the process works like this. I shoot the video pretty much all of it throughout the day, you know, myself, whatever I see is interesting. We upload it to an iCloud, okay? Then Christian and Athena, who is Eric uh, Froelich's wife, um, who you know from poker as well, he, uh, she at night, she takes all the footage, edits together, Christian helps with the music, so that way we have a quick turnaround. Okay. So like during the summer, you know, she wakes up around midnight, she starts editing, and then by, you know, 9 a.m. the next day, It's up so everybody can view it, you know, pretty fresh. Because you know the world now we live. If you show the vlog seven days later, everybody knows already. It's old news. So we wanted to keep it fresh. And, uh, and that's the system we use. So I don't actually edit them. But I have say. Like if I see something funny like Chainsaw, Alan Kessler, yeah. a lot of people enjoy, I said, okay, put a little bit with, you know, a chainsaw and something funny around that. And so I give her some things that I want in there. And then she, uh, she does a great job with it. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, you were also selling uh, action with no markup. During the WSOP? What? Yeah, yeah. I mean, listen, so I could sell at markup significantly, right? I could sell it a lot. Like, I mean, I could take advantage of people if I wanted to. Yeah. 
Um, but ultimately, like, I don't really care that much about money. I really don't. I never did. Whether I had money or whether I didn't have any money, I never cared like, oh, I need money to buy a watch. I don't care about stuff like that. So for me, if I was going to do this, I would have felt a little weird about charging people like, you know, interest or something like that. What we end up having to do, because the transaction fees, it's stupid for me to have to pay them all. So, you know, we just say that you have to cover the transaction fees. So like basically they pay maybe 1.05 or 4 or 3 depending on their thing. But for me it was important to just do it that way because I didn't care about, you know, the small amount of money I could pull in. It doesn't change my life. So, And I think, you know, for people it's a, it was, you know, a good investment for sure. And uh, yeah, where, where's the next uh, vlog going to be? So it's funny. I just saw the schedule for uh, – Australia and there might be some other events running around Australia in January. So if I do go and I haven't decided yet, could be a long trip. If I do go to that tr tournament, then I will also vlog as long as I get permission. Because when you're in the casinos and stuff, I want to vlog. I don't want to get in trouble. So I have to ask permission and make sure it's okay. But I would imagine it's good. They would see that it's good for them. Yeah. Free promotion. Like why wouldn't you want me to show off your casino every day? Seems like obvious. Yeah. Um, um, okay. um, you do a master class uh, in uh, September. So what was your, your goal or your – everybody now do a, a master class. Why you – what was the, the point to do this? Oh, my, so mine is completely different for a couple of reasons. First of all, I'm working with masterclass.com. If you look at who works with masterclass.com, it's the pinnacle people in their industry. Martin Scorsese teaches directing. Uh, Serena Williams teaches tennis. Uh, Wolfgang Puck teaches cooking. Yeah, you we, know, don't, like, we, don't, we don't know names. these. We don't know these people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, well, yeah. like, I'm sorry. <laughs> you never heard of any of them? <laughs> no, no, it's, you know. I'm joking, yeah. obviously. So all like the top of their class, and they do such high end work. And the, what I also liked about it was, so a lot of the master class people do. It's for poker players, right? Just people who really, really play poker. Masterclass reaches a much wider audience of people who are not in the poker world. They don't follow the new poker news all the time. But let's say they're looking at a video uh, of you know Steph Curry to teach to show teach how to sh basketball. Then they see poker. They say, oh, maybe I'll watch this one too and get interested. So it was an opportunity to expand. And they did so much marketing. You probably every time you watch a YouTube video before you watch a poker one, the masterclass comes up. You know because they spend yeah, a lot yeah. because it's been very well received. They did. Uh, You know, they're very happy with the results of uh, what we did. Uh, what, what, what's the, the main difference between yours and Phil Ivy's? So with mine and Phil's, obviously Phil's is shorter. So mine is a little more extensive. And, you know, Phil is more, I think, based off of like hands he's played, discussing his thought process and things throughout. So like you're hearing from Phil Ivy, like how he approaches poker. So that's basically like that's what you would learn. It's like, how does Phil approach it? Me, I try to take it from a different perspective and teach you how to do it and teach you how to think about it. So I do share, of course, like he does, how I play hands and how I've played hands in the past. But I'm also teaching people basic principles, concepts, some very like nerdy high-end concepts. But I try to do it in English. Maybe I'll do it in French someday too. But uh, I try to do it <laughs> in a language that people can understand. Because you know when poker nerds talk, sometimes you're like, oh, you have to – metacognition bifurcate your ranges and blah 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 like what the hell what language is this for average people they don't know what you're talking about so i try to take that information that's very good and explain it to them so they go aha uh -huh, i understand uh, a few years ago you were playing ice takes poker the the famous uh, cash game show uh, nowadays uh, there is a triton poker cash game that's like the the pendant for the the cash game uh, uh, show We we will see you in this show maybe one day in Macau. Yeah, I mean, you know what? I didn't know much, to be honest, about Triton a year ago. I was like, I don't know. It's this thing. But then I watched the Million Dollar Charity event that Bryn Kenny won. And I was like home here, like betting on it with friends, watching every day. And I'm like, man, I want to be there so bad. It looks <laughs> so cool, really. Because I think what Triton understands, you know, we talked about this before. The, the, the ecology of poker, winning players, losing players, and the house. They understand better than anybody, the most important player, your real VIP, is the player who's losing money. So they set up an event, fantastic idea, where businessmen got to play, and they got to pick a pro who got to play as well. And then the first six hours of the tournament, the businessmen played with the businessmen, and the pros had to play with each other. And then they combined like that. 
So really good idea to give businessmen not a feeling of like I'm t- being taken advantage of. I'm a sucker. Nobody wants that. Like if you're a businessman who has a lot of money, maybe you don't mind losing a million. But do you want to feel like embarrassed by playing with like eight top pros and you look like a, you know, a fool? You want some kind of a chance. So they understand that better than anybody. And I definitely think in the future I'll be uh, attending Triton events. Mm-hmm. Euh, Chichi, tu avais un petit truc, tu voulais faire un petit kiff, non Je voulais faire un, un petit kiff. Euh, euh, Daniel, you know, um, after the, the last part of, of our show, uh, it's called the party technique. You know, we study a hand and uh, with our guest. So, could you say in French, c'est la partie technique avec Chichi C'est la partie, say again C'est la, <laughs> c'est la partie technique avec Chichi. Okay. okay. C'est la partie technique avec Chichi. Oh, that's good. Thanks yeah, okay. a Thank good. you very much, yeah. Daniel. Merci yeah. beaucoup, yeah. Daniel. <laughs> you're welcome. Uh, so, <laughs> une petite... Ah oui, j'avais juste une dernière petite question. Uh, yeah, I had another question. Last question, it's not about poker at all, but uh, you really like, you always been uh, really vocal on social media everywhere about politics and uh, you're supporting Andrew Young. Um, so how important it is for you to talk about politics and to uh, share your opinion and uh, especially about that candidate? Yeah, honestly, like on my social media, I try to talk about it less now because I've learned over the years that right now the social media is like, I believe this, I believe this, and then you just keep talking, but nobody listens. Nobody's going to change their mind. It's, so it's a waste of time. Andrew Yang is different. You know, I think like... People on, he, he's like, I'm not right, I'm not left, I'm forward. And I think he unites, in a, in a way, both sides, and he's not involved in that sort of hatred and, that, and back and forth. So I like him. I think that he could win, if he were to win the nomination, which obviously is unlikely to happen, I do think he would be the most likely to be Trump. As of now, I'm very concerned, very concerned, that if they run who are, is in the front right now, that Trump will win and win easy. In this in this country, and listen, I'm I'm embarrassed to say it, but that's uh, more likely to happen than not because uh, you know th- there's a lot of <laughs> there's a lot of strange. But I don't want I don't want to insult people too much. But uh, Trump is an idiot, and he speaks well to idiots, and they understand what he's saying. So you know, <laughs> say la vie. Yeah. He's gonna be upset. He's gonna be upset when he will when he listen, listen, to, the when he will listen <laughs> yeah. to the show. But you know. <laughs> yeah. Daniel, on va te, on va te libérer. We're gonna set you free. Ah, merci beaucoup. Uh, thank you very much. Ah, ouais. Merci, merci beaucoup. Merci uh, mille fois yeah. d'avoir été avec nous uh, ce soir. Enfin, je sais, c'est le. It's, c'est la journée. Uh, it's one, one forty-five p.m. One forty-five p.m. Yeah. for you. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, oui, c'est ça. Merci beaucoup. <laughs> merci beaucoup. Et, and, uh, we, we hope to see you in Paris. Uh, Next year, maybe for some big okay. poker tournaments. Yeah, because all the all the like uh, poker uh, poker clubs reopened uh, recently. Oh, so I didn't know if you know yeah. about that, but uh, so the aviation is open again. So yeah. we we, yeah. Uh, we are tonight with the the new owner of the old aviation club de France. Ah, we, bonsoir. So yeah. bonsoir. <laughs> it's not, it's now a barrier barrier. You know barrier. Oh yes, of course. Yes. Yes. Maybe. Well, my wife loves Paris. She loves it there. So. Maybe we'll make a trip and make a vacation of it. So we come for the poker and then also, you know, see the city a little bit. Yeah. And yep. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you very much for Daniel. your time. It was a, okay, really guys. great to have you. And Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Merci beaucoup, Daniel. On l'applaudit. Wow.